cyberpunk edge runners is horribly good netflix dropped the anime adaption of the ever so famous rpg cyberpunk edge runners on september 30th 2022 baby of course the words anime adaption has a lot of a skeptical but guess what We've got some unqualified success here. In fact, the show might have breathed life into a dead fan base of a disappointing game. Now, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you the facts. With the gory themes, compelling characters, an unpredictable plotline, and an addictive soundtrack, Cyberpunk Edge Runners is the new show on the block that's screaming for your attention. Yeah! Yeah! Don't believe it? Well, stick around as we'll tell you the reasons why Cyberpunk Edge Runners is horribly good. Cyberpunk Edge Runners is the next big thing in the anime world, and surprisingly, it's an exceptionally good sci-fi action thriller. Edge Runner takes place in a dark, enthralling story of Night City, turning it into a high dynamic, charismatic 10 episode anime. Instilled with violence, sex, and profound dramatics, Edge Runners is exceptionally awesome through and through. The first few episodes tease us with what is coming up next. Introducing a young delinquent on the streets named David Martinez. David's mother is your typical overworked mom with big dreams for her only kid. Sadly, her stay on the show is short lived as she ends up Ooh. dying, leaving him all alone in the dark, dirty world of Night City. A miserable and bullied David ah! decides to get the infamous cyberware implant, the San Daviston, God, I hope I pronounced that right, to make his body stronger. Turns out the actual owner of those implants is James Norris, notorious for being a nutty psychopath. From the get-go, there is this lurking danger of David acquiring James's psychotic traits. What? However, the danger takes a back seat as David runs into Lucy, the white haired edge runner, making the lives of Arakusa employees harder one step at a time. But David soon realizes that her motives are not so pure at all as she sells him out to Maine and his gang. Oh, the, the deception! The betrayal, man, you deceived me! But little does everyone know that this is the start of a budding new relationship. One that is going to evolve in the coming episodes. Now at this point, I was like, dang, Lucy is for the streets. She belongs to the streets. How did she sell her boy out? But it all comes full circle. The show builds up climax as Lucy trains David and he learns the in and outs, slaying foes along the way. Essentially, Cyberpunk is about a deadly clash between the Edge Runners and Arasaka, a worldwide mega corporation like all megacorps has a few nefarious activities going on under the hood. The dots start to connect and the final mission of the story stretched across the last few episodes ending the show with an impressive bang. Now watching the anime, it was obvious that Studio Trigger took inspiration from the original video game. In fact, I might even go out on a limb and say they done it better. Compared to the game's almost dead Night City, the one we see in the show is living and breathing. The show takes the potential of the video game and runs wild with it. Cyberpunk Edge Runners does, however, take care not to stay too far from its predecessor. By keeping the lingo, the sound effects as close to the video game as possible, the show takes viewers back to the days of playing Cyberpunk 277. I guess I should say that as a year, but whatever. In fact, there are literal spots in the series that you'll recognize as places your character visited in the game. That is, if you've played the game. The show did miss out on some of the main characters from the video game, like Johnny Silverhand and V, but the new character that takes their place more than makes up for it. The show stayed true to the video game by centering the plot around the Arasaka Corporation and giving us the exhilarating top rich guy versus poor street kid storyline. As with most shows, the responsibility to carry the series rests with the protagonist. And in Cyberpunk Edge Runner's case, David Martinez does it beautifully. He's hot-headed, he's overconfident, he's passionate, he's loyal, he's in love. He has all the classic tropes that you're going to be looking for. Anyways, all of these reasons make him hit with the audiences. David's story doesn't feel bland or anything of the sort. He starts out as your average high schooler flunking school, 
breaking rules only to have his world turned upside down right in the first episode, might we add. However, as the plot progresses, the story adds complex layers to his character, which might just explain why most people stuck around till the end. Over the course of 10 episodes, we slowly witness David lose pieces of himself as he slowly ups his cyberware. Just when will he follow in Maine's footsteps? How far will he push himself? These are all questions you find yourself asking. And if that doesn't make for a compelling storyline, we don't know what will. Now on that note, the other characters on the show are equally as compelling, if not more. With Maine's backstory and Lucy's Arasaka past, we find ourselves empathizing with all of their stories. Even the depth of David and Lucy's relationship is explored and fleshed out across the 10 episodes. Some may argue the writers gave Lucy more of a damsel in distress story towards the end, but were willing to let it slide given how mind-blowing, mind-blowing the finale was. Besides, Lucy had plenty of badass moments in the show that more than make up for it. Another thing to admire about the show is how it doesn't pull any punches when it comes to its action. With its violent and gory themes, the cyberpunk edge runners almost reminds us of shows like Invincible on Amazon Prime. Check that out if you haven't already. The keyword, almost. The one thing that sets apart cyberpunk's play of gore and action from all those before it is the fact that the high energy of brutal action comes in a lot of variety. The guys don't just rely on their cyberware. With Rebecca's guns, the show seems to be adhering to the traditional form of violence, all the while staying relevant to the show's actual atmosphere. And then we have Lucy, who chooses to invade people's minds as a netrunner. However, she is not the type of bird to sing one tune. With her deadly mono wires, Lucy is just as deadly as the rest. At the end of the day, if you do belong to the select few who got bored during the anime, it certainly wouldn't be because of the glutinous amount of blood, gore, and guts. With a variety of elements to play with, Cyberpunk keeps each fight fresh. You find yourself anticipating the next character's move. And even to the best of your guesses, we guarantee that you won't be able to figure it out. Studio Trigger definitely deserves a whole lot of respect for not making any of the fights in Night City repetitive. Of course, with all the blood and gore and cybernetically enhanced implants, no death is the same. People are getting blown off, their heads are getting blown off, they're getting cut in half, they're getting squashed to death, they're getting tortured to death, they're dying in car accidents. All in all, no two deaths are the same. Interestingly, the violence only highlights the high stakes that come with being an edge runner and makes the threat all too real for the viewers. Moving on. Studio Trigger really outdid itself with the animation as well. With the play of vibrant colors and dull tones, the creators were successfully able to sell the fast-paced, adrenaline-pumping energy of the show. And it's not just the action scenes that were well animated. The studio paid equal attention when it came to their characters going into cyberspace. The flash escape display of David's ability, and not to forget, Night City itself. Everyone from the show's exciting eccentric cast has our hearts. Except for Faraday, of course. Boo! You stink! But if we were to pick the best girl on the show, it would definitely have to be Rebecca. Yeah, I said it. She kind of came off crass and, you know, a little hard to deal with with the appetite for chaos and the fast-paced life of being an edge runner in the beginning. Technically, kind of still in the end. However, before we chalk her up to another loudmouth character in the show, she surprises us. Rebecca was the one who stuck around till the end, shocking us with her unwavering loyalty to the group. Heck, she was the one who looked out for David when he was on the verge of cyber psychosis. One of the moments that particularly stand out to me is how she responded to her brother Pilar's death with anger and some very loud guns, perfectly befitting her character. She's five feet of chaotic power after all. However, following her brother's death, there seems to be some sort of maturity to her. Yes, she's still the reckless enthusiast making moves on David, but she's also out there looking out for her team, trying to get Lucy back with the group, all for David's sake. God damn it, she's the best. Now, now, this is where the passion of this comes. Yeah, for her to do that despite her crush on David, knowing that David is trying to get this shoddy and saving this shoddy is going to be in the way of her and David, this shit is impressive. 
Suddenly, none of her tantrums come across as cries for attention, but one of concern. She really shone in the finale when she chooses to stick by David's side when everyone else fell short. With all that said, it wasn't very cool of the writers, spoiler alert, to kill this shawty off. They really went ahead and killed our best girl like that. Studio Trigger, we will not be forgiving you for this one. This is some bullshit. This is bullshit. Now I have to instantly calm down to finish the rest of this video. Another thing that Studio Trigger seems to have nailed is its soundtrack. Although it failed to bring back Rebecca, we will keep talking. It's the perfect blend of pop and sci-fi. Soundscapes mix in together, bring back Rebecca. The OP is one way to get everyone's adrenaline pumping. My adrenaline would really be pumping if we brought back Rebecca. Other than that, there are moments where the show was able to immerse audience with the play of visuals and the right music throughout the show. It would only be better if, you guess it, they bring back Rebecca. <laughs> I want to say all jokes aside, but I'm not going to lie. You guys can hear. I was, you know, reading my script, and I'm actually going to speak to you guys. I am reading the script. I ain't going to lie, man. But when I got up to the Rebecca part, uh, I felt that one. Everything before that was just me being doing a good job, you know, articulating a video. And that Rebecca part, man, fuck! Anyways, back to a civilized script. Please excuse me for that moment of frustration. So uncivilized. But yeah, man, at the end of the day, Cyberpunk Edge Runner is a damn good anime. Both Studio Trigger and Netflix they did a good job. They restored our faith in the animated video game adaptions. I hope more like this can continue. So that is all for today's video. Hope you found some interesting opinions. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, and switching that notification bell on so you don't miss out on these updates. And while you're at it, why not share this with your community? Otaku boys, gals, you can also check out the other videos on this channel which you can find somewhere on the screen right now. With that said, hey, we will see you next time. Bring back Rebecca.